Hello YouTube, welcome to another League of Legends guide. Today we're covering Jungle Gragas, the Rabble Rouser. If you're buying, I'm in. Gragas is a very tanky AP jungler with great early game damage, even if he's going for a tanky build. He is one of the best disengages in the game with his ultimate and has a very fast clear speed as all of his abilities do AoE damage. He then even gets health back when he casts spells, giving him very high jungle sustain and making him a very, very strong jungler. He then also has slows on multiple abilities and a nice knockback from his ultimate, which gives him pretty damn good early and mid game pressure. Now as you're going for a relatively tanky build, your damage falls off pretty hard late game, although you will be a very tanky force. You're also very susceptible to kiting, unless of course you have your flash so you can body slam over minions, but if there are minions in front of you as Gragas and you don't have flash, you may struggle getting towards that enemy champion. You then also have numerous skill shots in your kit, and therefore a high skill cap. If you're not able to judge your ultimate correctly, you may end up saving the enemy rather than putting them in a position for them to be killed. With all of this said, he's definitely one of the strongest junglers out there at the moment, especially with the Runic Echoes and Iceborne Gauntlet build, but he still has cons just like everybody else. In her masteries, we focus on getting tanky by going 12 Ferocity and 18 Result. We get Strength of the Ages as our Keystone Mastery for that awesome 300 plus health we get when it's at max stacks. We make sure we pick up the runic armor instead of the increased health because it's awesome with our passive. Our passive gives us health whenever we use a spell and this just increases that amount. So besides that we pretty much just get as tanky as we can in the resolve tree and pick up as much damage as possible in the ferocity side. Gragas is one of those champions who seems to have multiple rune pages but this is by far my favorite. We get attack speed reds, armor yellows, magic resist blues and ability power quints. You could also go with magic penetration marks if you don't own attack speed. Your jungle clear won't be as fast, but you'll still be fine. Having magic penetration is a great thing as well. You can also grab movement speed quints if you wish to have a bit more effective ganks. You will, however, have a slower clear speed and less damage, but at least you can get there quicker. Finally, if you didn't really care about having magic resist, you could always get the attack speed blues and just put out a bit more damage. In every single one of my jungle Gragas games, I grab smite and flash. Smite is a 100% requirement on junglers so you can clear through the jungle and secure dragon and baron. It will also increase the effectiveness of your ganks if you decide to opt for chilling smite. Sometimes I decide to play a more support role and get the tracker's knife, but I do like to go for the chilling smite as much as I can. Flash is then an amazing summoner spell on Gragas since he can combo it with his body slam for a very strong engage that can completely catch people off guard. People love this combo with flash and so do I. You can use your E and then flash over minions to land your E on them unexpectedly, or you can change the directions of your E so you can land it from different angles. It's also great for escape of course, although he can also use his body slam for a short range escape, but having flash is nice as well because maybe your E will be on cooldown. So now we're going to start off each of our abilities by looking at our passive first, Happy Hour. So very very simply, Gregus heals for 4% of his maximum health upon using an ability and it has a static cooldown of 8 seconds. For those of you who don't know, of course, a static cooldown is one that does not go down with cooldown reduction. But anyways, this is just a fantastic ability that can heal you up through the jungle or add a bit more health to your health pool when you're in the middle of a team fight. This can actually do a lot of healing considering we do go for a tanky build which has some pretty generous health. So here is your bread and butter ability that we max first, Barrel Roll. You roll a cask to the target location, granting sight around it and fermenting over 2 seconds, increasing its damage and slow strength up to a maximum of 150%. It only has a 60% AP ratio, which is decent, but the base damage is really nice, between 80 and 240, which is why he does some nice early game damage. The slow is then between 40 and 60%, and keep in mind both of these can go up to a maximum of 150% if it ferments. So after 4 seconds or when you reactivate this cask, it explodes and does damage to surrounding enemies, but is reduced by 30% against minions and slows them for 2 seconds. So this cask is no longer as good as it was for poking enemy champions, because it doesn't do a ton of damage unless it ferments over 2 seconds, and nobody's really going to stand in that for 2 seconds long. It still does relatively good damage, and this is your main source of putting it out. As it does do AoE damage, it's then very very good for clearing through the jungle, considering you can also allow it to ferment. So next up is your W, Drunken Rage. This is a short channel which allows your next basic attack to do some extra damage, but also gives you damage reduction of between 10 and 18% for 2.5 seconds. Although Gragas goes for a tanky build, this is a great thing to activate when you're taking large amounts of damage just to reduce it even farther. After you finish your channel, the next basic attack does bonus damage like previously said. It is also an AoE, which makes it nice for the jungle clear. 
So it's only got a 30% AP ratio, but it also does 8% of the target's maximum health, making it great against high health targets. As it adds some nice AoE damage and some damage reduction, we max the second right behind our Q. So now here is your E, Body Slam. So this is your main way of engaging as it's a short dash which knocks people back and stuns them for one second. It has yet another good base damage of between 80 and 280 with a 60% AP ratio. The cooldown is then reduced by 3 seconds if Gragas hits an enemy. This is actually great because if you have 40% CDR, if you're hitting an enemy champion, this can be somewhere around the range of a 3 second cooldown. This can allow you to move target to target in team fights, giving you some pretty solid mobility. As good as this ability is, it's not as good as our Q and W. We just take one early point in it, just for the, you know, of course, gap closer or gap creator, and then max this one last. There, of course, is some different combos with this ability, but we will get into that in the combo page in this guide. So last but not least, your ultimate, Explosive Cask. So when you throw this cask, it hits the target location, damaging all nearby enemies and knocking them away from the epicenter of the explosion while also briefly granting sight of the nearby surroundings. So this is why Gragas is considered one of the best disengaged champions in the game. If crap like Kennen and Katarina's and all sorts of other shit end up engaging, you can simply throw this cask so they get all knocked out and then engage onto them after when they've wasted their cooldowns. It does pretty respectable damage and really disrupts the enemy team's team fighting ability. It's also great against things like Rengar who are generally trying to stealth through so they can get to your AD carry. You will get sight of them when you use this ability and you can delete that target before it gets to your AD carry. All in all, a very very strong ultimate which makes Gragas one of the best junglers out there, especially against hard engaged teams. So here is your ability order, it is very simply max your R first, then your Q, W, and then finally your E. Now as you can see here, we did take our E at level 1, but you can also opt for your Q at level 1 instead. E is definitely the best to take when you are on the golem side of the jungle, so you can stun both of those and take less damage. If you are however against the Gromp, you can use your Q to increase the damage on that target to get through the jungle a little bit faster, as E is not as effective. Now regardless of this, I almost always go for my E first anyways, just so I do have the ability to escape if I do get invaded. In solo queue, you never know, maybe the jungler and the mid laner are duo queued together and they're both going to invade you at your buffs and whatnot, like, solo queue is so fucked sometimes, so I really like having my E at level 1. So here are some basic combos, and the first one for long range burst is the Q barrel roll into explosive cast combo. So to pull off this combo, simply you have your Q on the ground underneath a champion, you activate your R, and right before the explosive cask ends, you activate the second part of your Q so it blows up and both hit instantly. Now this was most effective in the days of mid lane Gragas who went for a ton of AP and this would honestly just one shot combo all sorts of different AD carries, but this is still a good combo against targets who don't have a lot of health just to finish them off from a long distance. So the very popular combo that everybody does is the slow slash gap closer where you activate your E and then you flash for that body slam combo from a long range. You can also use this body slam going into a minion wave and flash right before you do hit to go over it and hit the target behind it and apply that body slam slow. Now you can make this a bit more complex of course, you can activate your W so it's on before you go into that body slam so your next basic attack does a shitload of damage. You can then follow up with that QR combo from a very short range for a full combo of your abilities. Keep in mind that the flash does change the direction of your charge from your body slam, so it's great if somebody uses a dash away from you, you can flash into them to still hit that body slam. When ganking in the early game, try saving your body slam until the enemy uses their flash, if it's possible. As soon as they flash, follow up with a body slam and kill that target. Now if you're level 6 and you have explosive cask, it's generally best to open with that knockback so they go into your team. Save body slam once again in case they flash away from you so you can follow up. You have very high early game damage since your abilities have great base damage on them. You then have a great slow and stun so make sure you're taking full advantage of your very strong ganks. So now we arrive at the item build which starts with a hunter's talisman, refillable potion and warding totem. So there's pretty much two main builds on Gragas, the Iceborne and Runic Echoes one, and the Cinderhulk and Frozen Heart build. Now I'm a way, way, way bigger fan of the Runic Echoes Iceborne Gauntlet build. It can add a ton of damage in the early game and gives you permanent slows. If you have absolutely no tank on your team whatsoever, then going for a full tank build would then probably be better than going for the Iceborne Gauntlet build. In basically all other cases, I'll go for that Runic Echoes Iceborne Gauntlet build. 
In both cases, we then take Ionian Boots for that 10% CDR since we don't get too much in the rest of our item pool. But, you know, you can also go for any other boots as well. They're all very viable. So for the item pool, it's basically all tanky items. Some do offer some offensive uses as well, but basically it's full tank. The most noteworthy ones here would be the Spirit Visage. It works really nice with your passive healing, so that's probably an item I take almost every game, no matter which build I'm going for. The other magic resist items are, you know, somewhat decent. I usually don't take two, unless of course, you know, it's a full AP team, then I might get a Banshee's Veil or something, but generally I stick to just the Spirit Visage. For the armor items, they take a lot more deciding which ones you want to go for. Now, the Dead Man's Plate is great if you want a bit more of effective ganks. The Sunfire then can work really good in an Iceborne Gauntlet build if you want, since of course you won't have that burn from the Cinder Hulk. As for Randuin's, well, it's a really strong item against teams with a lot of crit, like say a Yasuo. I pretty much always grab a Randuin's if I am against a Yasuo. Now then, of course, if we are against one of those full AD auto attack teams, Thornmail will make them all super, super sad. So we make sure we grab that Thornmail in those cases. Now in that Runic Echoes build, we'll of course take our core, and as long as the enemy team is a mix of AD and AP, we'll add a Spirit Visage, Dead Man's Plate, and Guardian Angel. This gives you a ton of magic resist and armor in that complete build, a lot of health, and that nice increase to the passive healing we give as well. For our full tank build, we of course take the Cinder Hulk Frozen Heart, and then add for our core the Spirit Visage yet again, Dead Man's Plate yet again, and if there is a lot of AD, we'll grab that Thorn Mail. If it's a lot of AP, then we may want to go for the Abyssal Scepter or a Banshee's Veil. He's a champion who itemizes very, very well. You just pretty much pick if you need armor or magic resist and then select one of the items for that and, you know, move on. So that pretty much covers everything for our patch 6.16 Jungle Gregus Guide. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. And if you guys did enjoy the video, please make sure you like and subscribe as we have lots and lots of League of Legends content. Other than that, we do skin giveaways on our Twitter, which is at egaming underscore TV. So if you're interested in the opportunity to win free skins, make sure you head over there and give us a follow. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the other videos. Peace.